Hello and welcome, my name is Dr. Jack. What if I told you that for the vast majority of people, taking a statin medication to reduce all forms of cholesterol offers very little to no protection from heart disease and stroke, and that eating cholesterol has absolutely no bearing on your cholesterol level. In this video, we will talk about why such a claim can be made, and we will talk about why just looking at cholesterol levels is the wrong way to reduce your risk of cardiac disease, as well as why taking statins matters very little in certain situations. But before we get started, please do me a favor and hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Tell me if you've heard this before. High cholesterol is bad for you and puts you at risk of heart attacks. Therefore, you should eat less saturated fat. If it is too high, you should take medicine to bring it back down. This is what we are taught in medical school and this is what every expert has told us about cholesterol. However, there must be more going on since the majority of heart attacks are in people with normal cholesterol. And about one third of people treated with statins have a recurrent event within five years. Let's start by talking about cholesterol. It is a little Little waxy lipid or fat molecule that is one of the most important substances in the animal kingdom. Brain cells need it to make connections or synapses with other cells. It is needed to make bile acids to help us break down and absorb fats. It is a precursor to every important sex hormone as well as vitamin D when it is converted by sunlight. It makes up one third of the cell membrane of every cell in our bodies and facilitates cellular repair as well. Essentially, you cannot survive without cholesterol. And that is why your liver and other cells make the stuff every day, even if you consume none in your diet. In fact, 85% of it within us is actually made by our body rather than consumed. And that level gets adjusted up or down depending on the amount of dietary cholesterol that we take in. Cholesterol is fat soluble, so it does not dissolve in your blood. So it needs to be carried by lipoprotein. These are substances like LDL, HDL, and VLDL, which you've probably heard of in a standard doctor checkup and lab draw. These stand for low density, high density, and very low density lipoproteins. Each of them carries things like triglycerides, cholesterol, and protein, along with other fatty acids. So when you get a blood test, is to see how much of all of this is floating inside of your blood. Let us go through each of these substances in a bit more detail. VLDLs are the largest of the three, and it is made in the liver. It is made up of 50 to 80% triglyceride and a small amount of cholesterol. VLDL delivers their triglyceride content to muscle and fat cells cells for energy. Once they have done this, they shrink and are converted into either large fluffy LDLs or small dense LDLs. Fluffy LDLs are not a big deal and can be viewed as cardioprotective on some level as they keep going about delivering cholesterol to cells that need it. They also bind to cells in the liver easily so they get pulled out of your blood. The dense LDLs, however, are a totally different story. If they predominate, then the risk of coronary heart disease can go up threefold in some studies. When these dense LDLs get caught in the blood vessels with an oxygen-rich environment, they become what's called oxidized. This ultimately leads to inflammation, plaque buildup, and hence what's called atherosclerosis. You also have immune cells called macrophages that come by and gobble up the oxidized LDL. They convert them into things called foam cells, which are fat-laden cells that build up in the artery as well. These dense LDLs, unlike their fluffy counterparts, also do not bind to cells within places like the liver very well, so they stay in your blood circulation longer. The constant buildup of plaque blocks blood flow, leading to things like heart attacks or peripheral vascular disease, or decrease blood flow to any other organs. They can also rupture and release clots into the bloodstream. So when we eat a high carb, low fat diet and we get these huge insulin spikes, it drives the conversion of those carbs into fat or triglycerides. This in turn leads to more dense LDLs. Consuming high polyunsaturated fats from things like vegetable oils in your food are much more prone to this oxidation than saturated fats. Eating such things is like eating radiation given how bad they are for your blood vessels. Due to the way that vegetable and seed oils are processed with various toxic chemicals and because they are sensitive to things like heat, oxygen, and light, they are a concentration of free radicals. 
They are linked to things like cancer, issues with your immune system, and ultimately leads to metabolic syndrome. Essentially, eating high carb diets causes high triglycerides, which leads to more small dense LDL and lower HDL. This causes inflammation and oxidation leading to atherosclerosis. And for those of you that follow the channel, you know I've been creating a playlist on nutrition and permanent weight loss. I highly suggest checking out those videos as you may find some of what is said there to be quite surprising. So without understanding, let us talk about what the numbers really mean when you go to the doctor and have your cholesterol checked. LDL-C, means LDL calculated. That's what the C stands for. This is the number typically reported on lab tests. It is a measure of the cholesterol mass within your LDL particles. It is calculated indirectly based on your total cholesterol, triglycerides, and your HDL. So if you have large amounts of large fluffy LDL particles carrying cholesterol, then LDL calculated will be high. However, as mentioned before, fluffy LDL particles are not a big deal. You can also have lots of small dense LDLs, which is is the truly bad LDL. And in this case, your LDL calculated may be lower even though the number of these particles is bad for you as they are the ones that cause plaque buildup. Now let's talk about LDLP. It stands for LDL particle number. It is a direct measure of the number of LDL particles in your blood. This number has more of a correlation with heart disease than LDLC. It is much better to know the total particle count of LDL overall and the ratio of small or large particles. This may explain why a UCLA meta-analysis study showed that 75% of patients hospitalized for a heart attack had a LDL of less than 130. Half of them had a LDL cholesterol under 100. What's interesting is that rather than saying, okay, there must be more to the story, various special interest groups are using this data to say that an ideal LDL number should be even lower. Now what about HDL or the good cholesterol? HDL takes cholesterol back to the liver for recycling. They are also called nature's garbage trucks because they also clean up oxidized or damaged cholesterol leading to decreased plaque formation. But what constitutes as a quote unquote normal level of cholesterol? Besides, it has been reduced several times over the years. And with each decrease, of course, more people need to be taking medicines to bring it back down. It used to be that 300 was fine, but then new research with questionable direct and indirect funding by the very entities that stand to profit from high cholesterol found that 300 was too high and that 250 was more acceptable. And then down and down it went to where it is today at about 200. We maintain that this is a good cholesterol number, even though the majority of heart attacks occur in folks with cholesterol levels below 200. So why do we have all of this misinformation about cholesterol? In the 1950s, Ansel Keys published the Seven Countries study. His reports show that eating fat and cholesterol raise cholesterol levels, and therefore it must increase the risk of heart attacks. In fact, in 1961, he made the cover of Time Magazine for his war on cholesterol. What's funny is that in June of 2014, his arch nemesis, Butter, <laughs> was on the cover of Time Magazine as well. And it had the headline of, quote, scientists labeled fat the enemy, why they were wrong, end quote. So overnight, things like butter, eggs, and bacon became vilified, the world made cholesterol public enemy number one, all the while, no one bothered to verify the study results, until recently, that is. There was a highly regarded Framingham health study. It followed 15,000 participants in Framingham, Massachusetts, over three generations. It started collecting data way back in 1948 and is still ongoing today. It is to date the most comprehensive study of health and illness factors. The director of the study, Dr. William Castelli, summarized his findings on cholesterol by saying, quote, serum cholesterol is not a strong risk factor for coronary heart disease, end quote. They concluded that there is no correlation between dietary cholesterol and serum cholesterol levels. They also found that the participants that ate the most cholesterol, saturated fat, and total calories actually weighed the least and were the most physically active. And again, if you saw my other videos on permanent weight loss, that intake of calories actually makes sense. There are also organized groups like the International Network of Cholesterol Skeptics made up of over 100 MDs and PhDs from around the world who have dedicated their time to put to rest this argument that eating animal fat and cholesterol causes your blood vessels to become atherosclerotic. Their research concludes that atherosclerosis is mainly caused by too much oxidation leading to inflammation of a certain type of cholesterol. In some circumstances, it was discovered that this oxidation is made worse by eating a cholesterol-free polyunsaturated fats in grain and vegetable oils that we have been told to consume. In 2015, the USDA Dietary Guidelines Committee and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services got rid of the suggestion of consuming less than 300 milligrams a day of dietary cholesterol, stating that, quote, available evidence shows no appreciable relationship between consumption of dietary
dietary cholesterol and serum cholesterol, end quote. Cholesterol is not a nutrient of concern for overconsumption, end quote. There was also a Japanese study published in the Annals of Nutrition and Metabolism in 2015 that reported that high cholesterol does not lead to heart disease and actually protects against many illnesses. They actually found the exact opposite. They found that the higher your cholesterol, the less likely you were to die from all causes. Another study has shown that people with the highest cholesterol have better memories with less dementia than those who had lower cholesterol levels. Could it be that the rise in dementia levels is due to the tight controlling of cholesterol levels through our diet and medications like statins? There are countless books that have come out on the topic looking at the science, books like The Cholesterol Myths, Exposing the Fallacy That Saturated Fat and Cholesterol Cause Heart Disease by Dr. Ufe Ravskoff, MD, PhD, published in 2000, and The Great Cholesterol Myth by Dr. Johnny Bowden, a nutritionist, and Stephen Sinatra, a cardiologist, published in 2015. And let's briefly talk about statins. They are fraught with side effects. Some studies have shown that statins can increase the risk of developing diabetes. Many of these side effects are due to statins interfering with the production of coenzyme Q10. It is a micronutrient that is essential for mitochondrial function. Think of mitochondria as little powerhouses for your cells and they make energy and defend your cells against free radicals damage. Statins will lower cholesterol but it has no influence on the LDL particle size and can only reduce total LDL by reducing both the neutral and harmful versions. If you have a dramatic decrease in total cholesterol or LDL it ultimately means very little because it doesn't tell you much about the oxidation and inflammation that occurs that truly leads to heart disease. Statins have been shown to slightly reduce the risk of heart attacks among men under the age of 65 with a history of a heart attack before. So I can talk about this topic quite a bit more and please know that I did simplify a lot of the things in this video, especially what happens on a cellular level. I did not even talk about the various lipoproteins and their role in all of this as well. The take home message is that the problem isn't so much cholesterol as it is oxidation and inflammation as the main causes of heart disease. This is driven by poor dietary choices, insulin resistance, along with stress. These play a much larger role than just counting your cholesterol levels, which is why I've done so many videos covering so much of these topics as a theme of this channel is to help you live a healthier, happier, and wiser life through knowledge. The other issue of tracking a number is that there's also the psychological aspects of just treating a number that is believed to be the main cause of heart disease. We take a medication, it goes down, so we think that we're in the clear so we go about our lifestyle of continuing to poison our bodies rather than nourish it. Ultimately the best way to combat heart disease is through the old tried and true lifestyle modifications. Focus on reducing the amount of highly processed or refined carbohydrates, exercise, get good rest, manage stress, Focus on staying at an ideal body weight and consuming certain vitamins and minerals like omega-3 oils, coenzyme Q10, vitamin D. I plan on doing a whole separate video on supplements that I suggest uh, to take, so make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on as well. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please be sure to share it with others. So we'll wrap it up here. Till next time, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye. Pura Vida.